What is the word, y'all? It's Devontae's Reaper Trainer, and y'all are now listening to the Reaper Motivation Podcast. Appreciate y'all for joining me today, man. Um, Today, so I was actually going through some of my older podcasts, and um, one of my most listened to or streamed ones is um, the uh, Relationship Material um, podcast from, like, I think, like, three years ago now, which is kind of crazy to think about, like, it's wild that shit was that long ago, but, uh, yeah, that's one of my most streamed ones, man, and, uh, so I wanted to do a 2.0 to that, and when I started putting together the list of it, there was one that stuck out that I was like, man, I got a lot to talk about on that, so I'm gonna save the 2.0 for later, but this main one is gonna be a whole separate podcast in and of itself, because I thought it was that important. Outside of maybe drugs and complacency, I don't know anything else that's going to be more detrimental to your goals than this situation here. And the situation we're talking about is an insecure woman. Now, before I go into deep, deep detail about all this, uh, I want to first off state uh, everyone has insecurities, right? Um, I don't care who you perceive as a perfect individual or someone who's... Um, uh, just your idea of a of a squared away person. Everyone has something that they will change about themselves. The difference between having uh insecurities and being an insecure person is just how negatively your insecurities cause you to act. Whether that be extreme low confidence or you fucking with other people. So, give you an example, right? If you go to a club, right, and everybody's drinking, have a good time. You got that one motherfucker who's like five foot four. Who's mugging everybody in the club? He, yeah, like motherfucker. We we over there playing a cha cha slide, and your ass is 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 growling in the corner, you little fucking angry midget. Like motherfuckers, like like that is an insecure person. Now, an insecure person is just a negative. Well, I mean, we all know them. You know what I'm saying? We've all met people like that. Like I said, we all have insecurities. But if you let your insecurities overcome you, you it, it is never good. You know, these are the people who you see with extremely low confidence. These are the people that you see who are very, very troublesome, very abrasive and just, you know, what I mean, this, these are the people that you never want to be around. And um, so I don't want to I don't want this this podcast to come off as a, as though I'm like pinpointing or targeting anybody, anything like that. We're just talking about the negative effects and what to look out for. And, I mean, I guess you can really extend this to men also if you're looking at it from a woman's perspective. I'm taking it from a man's perspective because I am a man. And uh, I'm pretty sure – well, not pretty sure. I know having an insecure man as opposed to an insecure woman comes with a whole other set of things that mainly women can can attest to. But I am going to touch on that a little bit too. Um, And – like I said, this is only the the negative parts of this. Now, what I will say before I get into this about what an insecure woman is, what's the what's the traits, and how you can avoid this, and why it's so detrimental. Um, you also have to take accountability for yourself. So, if you're one of those dickheads that likes to tear down women's self esteem just for the sake of doing it, this the things I'm gonna talk about are not. Like you, what, the best way to put this is, are you don't want to be a catalyst for the things that that's gonna go on. So if you, when you go out with your girl, are fucking flirting with waitresses in her face and a little dumb shit like that, then yes, you're you're gonna end up with someone who's very insecure and is gonna do a lot of shit that's gonna be in the way of stuff. But that's really on you. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking about it's inconsequential. Like you're not doing anything outright to upset them or anything like that you're just living your day-to-day life and here comes all this bullshit so the reason why i think this is the biggest detriment is that a very insecure woman is going to be for lack of a better word it's just going to be an absolute headache like i don't know because here's the thing there, there is no there is no amount of because I know you're probably thinking, well, that's why you need reassurance and you need this. And you know, there is not enough reassurance. There's not enough compliments. There's not enough time spent in the world to change how she feels because your perception of you is you. 
You, only you can change how you feel about yourself. Only you are in charge of your self-esteem. You see what I'm saying? Now, like I said, people can affect it. People can fuck with it. And if you're not, if you're doing that, then this doesn't apply to you. But if you're not doing that, then this is something that you really don't have a, a much of a say in. And I'm gonna give you a case in point. If if you if if you're somebody, if you're in a relationship with someone who's very insecure and they need to be spoken to all fucking day, does that sound like a situation where you can be productive? If you're doing 60 hour weeks, if you're doing 80 hour weeks, 70 hour weeks, and they're going to come. If you're trying to get on your purpose and get on your goal, those days are ahead. Sorry to tell you. How on you know, how on God's green earth are you gonna be doing that much working, that dedicated to what you're trying to do in your life, and you have this person that you have to talk to every five minutes to to remind them that you like them? It just doesn't work. It, and and the, I'm I'm gonna go into some of the like the 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 red signs of this, but you need to be very cognizant of what's going on because I'm telling you right now, this is because. You know, the big thing that we talk about uh, now with relationships is toxicity. And um, that is a big thing. But the thing about somebody being toxic, that's something that you're, somebody's trying to do. You see what I'm saying? Like someone who is actively attempting to cause confusion and, 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 and arguments and all types of shit like that and, and you know, unsure like that someone who's who's actively trying to do that is is obviously it's going to be a detriment too but it's a lot more easy to wean out and it's a lot more people can get away from someone who's toxic much easier than they can someone who's insecure because the insecure person you almost feel bad for them because obviously they're not trying to fuck your life up but <laughs> just off of you know off of just how they're acting they're fucking it up and that's what makes it rough. And that's what where you get these long ass, you know, codependent relationships where it's like, bro, like you don't want to leave because you don't want to feel like the bad person. But lo and behold, this fucking girl is ruining everything. So you have to be really cognizant of this and you have to pay attention because, you know, if you wait too long, it gets worse and worse and it becomes harder to leave. I'm telling you right now. I, look, I've been there. Is it? You have to. You have to notice the signs and get the fuck on, girl or man. You see what I'm saying? So, the number one way. Uh, not the number. One, well, I'm gonna go through a few of these, but the number one red flag of an insecure woman is going to be. This is probably I put it number one for a reason because this is the one that is probably the most. Detrimental to goals. This is the girl who starts fights to see how much you care about her. Now I don't know how I don't know if y'all know this, but uh women to to make sure like to I don't know, I don't understand the logic behind this, but to see how much you care about them, they're going to try to start shit with you, start fussing with you, picking at you to see how emotional you get because they correlate that emotion to you loving them more or some shit like that. It's it's just it's weird. Now the reason why I say it's the the biggest issue is because does that sound like a situation where you can get shit done? So let's say you like this. Let's say you're you're out, you're out, you're at work, and you've been working hard and you're tired, right? And you get home from work and you really just need to, you know, get some rest for the next day because you're 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 running on empty. We've all gotten to those points. If you once you get into in, on your purpose, we've all had those days where like we're running on e, like we're starting to burn out. So to speak, there is no worse feeling. And I've been there. There's no worse feeling on this earth than to be damn near burning out from how hard you're working and have to deal with this, this, this bullshit. This is going to, this is going to, this is going to make you want to quit what you're doing because of this person. You see what I'm saying? And this is, here's the thing. This is why I said, this is the difference between a toxic person and an insecure person. Uh, a toxic person, you can tell they're just fucking with you because it makes them happy. A uh, insecure, uh, insecure person, they they might gen genuinely just be just unsure about you. So they're just starting shit to just kind of feel like it's like you can feel the energy doesn't feel as as heinous, if that makes sense. Like it doesn't feel like this direct like this person's fuck on me because they're a bad person. It feels like this person's fuck on me because they have they, they're fucked up in the head. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And 
Now again, I'm a, I got, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm probably gonna say this every couple minutes because I, I, I know men tend not to be the most emotionally intelligent. Um, if you're doing shit to make this girl insecure, this does not apply to you. You're, you're, this, what, what's going on is your fault. So, so if you are working, like I said, and you come home, and you smell like fucking perfume <laughs> when she sees you. Okay, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to go through some shit like that. That's that's you doing dumb shit. If you're, you know, when you're out, you're you're going to lunch, you you know, you're going out to a bar after work, and you're at that bar for four four and a half hours, and all your coworkers are women. Like things like like obvious things like that, bro. You're gonna introduce problems. But I'm just talking about you went to work, you're working overtime, you get home, you know, tired, sweaty, bags in your eyes. And here she is fussing because you didn't answer the phone an hour ago when you were driving in, in traffic. You know what I mean? Shit like that. Like this is just like you can't that you can't afford that. And and I'm bringing I put that first for a very good reason. If you see that, I I mean, I say get the fuck out of Dodge. Did that like maybe give a warning the first or maybe the second time? But I'm not gonna get too many warnings. That shit is a that that right there. Will destroy whatever you got working on. You might as well ball that shit up and throw it in the trash. It will not be long. You cannot be successful like that. That is just a fucking. That is a, a accident waiting to happen. And that is man. I can't tell you how common this this is. Um, the next next one, and this one is going to be more of like a, a dating red flag as opposed to being in an actual relationship. Um, how are you about about who? Other women all the time. So if every time you meet with a girl, she has some type of joke, oh, it must have been that other bitch, or oh, this, or you know, oh, I know you tell that to all the girls. They, they, they always have this fucking some type of joke in regards to them relating to another woman. It sounds like a joke, right? It sounds harmless. It might annoy you a little bit, but. Understand if that's what she's doing in a relationship in, in a dating phase, that's not going to change as y'all get serious. It's going to get worse. And I'm telling you, it's, and the thing about when it gets worse is this. Now, remember, I was, I gave the example about you flirting with people on her face, and that's an obvious thing that that make a woman feel away. But I'm talking about like you guys go out and maybe a woman is is giving you the eye because you look nice. You don't notice it. She does. So guess what's going to happen when y'all get in the car? She's going to throw a fucking fit. Here comes the here comes the bullshit. Y'all could be out enjoying a good dinner, and she sees that and just starts to decide to fuck the night up. Y'all see how 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 fucking hectic this sounds. This is this is this is all. Listen, if if y'all don't take away nothing else from my podcast, we are trying to ma- maximize. Because here's the thing: this doesn't matter as much if you're content with life. Because here's the thing: if you're just content with work and you only do 40 hours and you get home. You sit on the couch and relax until it's time to go to bed. Well, I mean, you got more than enough time to deal with this shit. Got more than enough time. What the fuck? What are you doing? It's nothing. I mean, hey, like, what what, what else would you be doing other than arguing with her, to be honest with you? If, if we're being truthful, this is only for if you want more out of life. Because if you want more out of life, the, the scenarios I'm giving you, you're going to deal with burnout. You're going to deal with uh, um, a reset day. You know, when you're working hard, you need to factor in a reset day, a day for you to go and rest and, and breathe and, you know, get yourself together and, and and eat and, you know, just relax. Do you think you're going to be able to have a good reset day with this bullshit going on? Do you think you're going to be able to avoid burnout with this bullshit going on? Because the, the stress adds into what you're already doing to yourself anyway. Do you think you're going to be able to save money dealing with this bullshit? Because you're not going to be in the house. So guess what? If you don't want to be in the house or you don't want to be around them, you're going to go out and spend money on all the shit that you don't need to be spending money on. Y'all see how all this kind of flusters together? And here's the other thing, right? I always say a relationship is either an asset or a liability. Do you think this is a this is a good person to have help you with your goals? No. How the fuck am, are we supposed to do business? How am I supposed to trust you to handle business if every five seconds your ass is 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 hounding me about who I'm testing and who I'm calling? And here's a the, the, the next red flag. Women who are insecure are not fun to be around. You are going to hear this shit every fucking day. 
And it's going to be in the most stupidest spots. I'll give you an example. I was dating this one girl. We go to the gym. Now, if y'all know, I know y'all can be on social media. Women go to go to the gym damn near fucking naked. And I am a man, obviously. And I guess I might have looked in a direction or glanced over to this girl. And here come this fucking girl tweaking in the gym. Bro, that was a... Man, I, I mean, I really don't bring people to the gym with me anyway. But I tell you what, that's the last time I brought a date to the gym with me. I don't do no gym dates. I, I fucking you ain't fucking up my workout. Though that is the one place I do not tolerate no bullshit. Don't come playing with me in the fucking gym. This is where I. This is my therapy time. You know what I'm saying? But this is what I'm talking about. You you can't train with motherfuckers like this. You can't. It's 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 it is. Uh, and here's the thing that, and again, what makes it so rough, and what makes it kind of harder on you, is that all of this, like I said, it's not gonna come across as like a. a like with any malice, like it's not going, it's not going to feel like she's doing this because she's a bad person. It's going to feel like she's doing this because she's fucked up in the head. And you're gonna want. And here's the thing, and I and I want to sell this too because I I think this is a a thing that people fall in. And and I know you like you're, you're probably just thinking like you know maybe if I love her just enough, if I talk to her just enough, if I, you know, just do a little bit more, maybe she'll stop. Maybe she'll start to trust me. Maybe she'll chill the fuck out. It's never gonna happen. You got to understand, bro, and, and this is the thing. There is no amount of, of compliments. Because you got to think, well, think about it like this. Obviously, you being with somebody regularly means that you like being around them. You talking to somebody, you smiling at somebody, you laughing with somebody, you kissing somebody, you having sex with somebody. All these are, are, are signs of affection and love and interest. If you don't get the hint from none of that, if after all that, if after the time spent and all this other shit, you still don't get the fucking hint, you, you're never going to get the hint. It's impossible. So you would think that, and, that's, and that makes it even worse, because guess what? You're going to try to keep doing things to try to make it better, because you're thinking, maybe I'm, I'm getting close. So that's the funny thing, right? It'll get, it'll get good for a little bit, and you'll keep trying and trying, and it never actually gets better. And you know what's happening while, while you're doing this? You're falling behind. If y'all, if y'all, if you, if any of y'all are sports fans, and there's ever an athlete that you're a big fan of, you're like, damn, what happened to bro, bro, man? He used to be so good. Bro's falling off his game. I guarantee you, he's in a situation like this, dealing with a woman who's who's in the fucking way. Because in the in the midst of you going through this bullshit, in the midst of you arguing and fussing and and living this this nonsense on this fucking soap opera, Days of Our Lives bullshit. Guess what? A motherfucker like me is moving ahead of you. You can't beat me with that going on at home. You can't. If you were, if you were a, a, a rookie coming into the NBA and you dealing with this fuck shit, you think you gonna catch up LeBron? You think you gonna catch KD? You think you gonna catch Joel and Embiid? You not. You not focused enough, nigga, because you dealing with this bullshit. And again, it's gonna be harder to get rid of it because it's it, you, you. You feel bad for the situation. So the call to action of this is you need to be very, number one, the same thing I talked about before, bro. You need to vet these women out. You need to check for all these things. If you're, if you know, if you have long periods in between you texting her, is it like a World War Three issue? Now, obviously, if this is your girlfriend, you know, if you're texting back two, three hours later, that's going to be an issue. But if this is someone you're just dating, like... If it like I'm not gonna lie, whenever it's, I mean it doesn't happen often, but whenever a woman tries that shit with me, it's like I nip that in the bud, bro. I'm, I'm gonna get to you when I get to you. You don't hold no rank around this motherfucker to be the man in me. No goddamn time frames on sets the hell. But like that's but that's a sign right there. We you not even you you already trying to control shit and 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 wondering about what I'm doing and probing me out and and we not even serious. That's a sign right there. That's a red flag. You got you got to pay attention to that. That needs to put your antennas up. You got to vet these women out when you're dating them. You have to. It's very important. You don't want to fall into this trap. Because I'm telling you right now, like I said, you can't, in the midst of you dealing with this bullshit, let me tell you something, man. I remember uh, in 2018, I remember I was, man, thinking about it is, is irritating me because I had these situations going on. But here's the thing. I was invested in the market, bro. Do, do y'all know? That I had the GameStop stocks. I had 
uh, not Bitcoin. Um, it was a uh, Ethereum. I had, bro. I I, I was having stuff because I was working so much overtime. But guess what? I was working overtime and dealing with this bullshit on the side. So working all this overtime. I'm talking about crazy overtime. I'm talking about 80 hour weeks, bro. I wasn't sleeping and still dealing with this bullshit. And guess what? When all that overtime, I started to burn out. And then that started to compile on top of it. And you know what I would do? I would splurge and spend money on dumb shit to try to take my mind off of it. And guess I I could have had so much more money in my pocket when I moved out from my, with my grandma. But I didn't because I was dealing with this bullshit. So don't learn learn from my mistakes. Learn from the mistakes of, let me tell you something, any man that you find that's a bum, not any, let, let's say 75% of men that you meet that's a bum, that's an older, like, I, I don't want to say bum, because, like, like, I'm talking about bum as in a mindset. Not that he's broke, but, like, he's a broke in a mindset. He's not thinking about investing. He's not thinking about skills. He's not thinking about growth. He's not thinking about any of that. He's just thinking about tomorrow, the weekend, tricking off on hoes. All that, like that's that that that's that type of bum. I guarantee you, somewhere in that story, that midst of that shit, he dealt with this same situation. You need to steer clear of this shit. Get away from it as soon as possible. Because all the while that you're dealing with this bullshit, this 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 fucking in uh unhelpful sea of nonsense, you getting passed up. Every day you not hustling, someone's taking your fucking spot. Every single day. You need to, every day you wake up, do something to be better than yesterday. Do something to improve yourself. Do something to change your situation. And if you're not, (laughs) you can't compete. You can't compete. That's why I made that podcast about that toxic shit. If you a a motherfucker who likes toxic relationships, you not... (laughs) Motherfucker, you can't win. You can't win. Because even if you start to win, you're going to fuck yourself up. Where Blueface at right now? I made that I made that podcast about him and, and, his, and uh, his girlfriend. Where he at right now? He in jail. You're going to try to win. You have the potential to win. You have the setup to win. But you're going to keep losing because you keep fucking up. Because you didn't grow mentally. That's what the fuck happens. And that's what's going to happen with this. So pay attention to the red signs. I mean, to the red, to the, uh, to the red flags. You know, and vet these women. Now, again, this only really applies to you, like if you're really oriented with your goals. Because listen, I'm not gonna say this would be like this forever. It might be. I know people. They 10, 12 years into relationship, they'll they'll tell me. A couple things about that girlfriend. I go, yeah, yeah, she she super insecure. I go, we talking about you gotta call her every other hour. Call, not a text. But you gotta call every other hour. You go out with your friend. She's gonna call you on the way there. Call you in the car. Call you when you walk in. Call you in the middle of it. Call you in the bathroom. Call you in the what? Hey, yeah, bro, that's just, and you just these motherfuckers been together seven eight years. You that insecure still? That fucking house must be like hell. But, but, you, but you wanna know something about the and, here, and, and I hate to say it. Let me ask you this. Do y'all think the people I'm talking about that's in those situations, you think they thriving? No. Well, you think when I was in that situation, do you think I was thriving? No. Not as much as I could have been. I could have been leaps and bounds and head and shoulders above where I was. But, you know, here I am playing with this bullshit. So you got to make a decision on what's really important to you and what you want to do with yourself. But yeah, man, this is Devontae's group training. Uh, this was very important for me to put out. I wanted to make sure I got my point across. Um, be on the lookout, bro. You get one shot at your goals. Life is, is a one-shot goal. It's not like GTA. You you know, fuck shit up and come back and get a new life. Nah, you only get one shot. Don't waste it. Don't miss it. We don't chase dreams, we hunt goals. Please subscribe. I'll holler at y'all soon. Let's get it.